Hello everybody, I would like to show you a new way to export particles from Houdini to Maya because when I read all the comments uh, to the part one and the part two, uh, many people have issue with uh, Bifrost. So I find another way with uh, Arnold. So here we go. I've got a little simulation, a grain simulation uh, in, in Houdini, simple simulation for on few frame and explode in uh, wet sand up the grain with the color. Uh, something interesting here, here is they are uh, bright on the top and, and darker in, 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 in the bottom uh, because the sand is wet under uh, the surface. So I've got the ground with the same um, difference color, darker in, in the bottom and, and, and brighter in the, in the surface. And to have a better integration, I just add a scatter. And normally um, we used to make a mesh uh, of the simulation, but here for the purpose, we will export the grain. So the first thing we have to do as usual is to scale up uh, the particles in Maya. Uh, the units are in centimeters and in Udini the units are in meters. As you noticed, we can't see anything because this p-scale is different. So I tried uh, to scale up the p-scale, but I didn't arrive to um, modify it and, and to use it. I, I, will, I will dip a, a little bit in, uh, in, in the setup to, to find a way to, to export this p-scale. We will reset the p-scale into Maya. So here is I just remove all the all the the attributes. I just keep the color and the ID, the P, the Pascal, and the V, and the Pascal. I think I can I can remove it. Um, here is I use my ID. Uh, I set my ID here, my 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 ID attribute, which is ID. In fact, I don't use ID attribute because there are some issue when you set ID a custom ID attribute in the in the input of the VLAN server because the VLAN server use ID attribute so it can make some strange behavior of your grain and the same in Maya you can't uh, reuse the attribute so I export that you have to make a sequence of file not one uh, alambic with all the simulation. So uh, we have to use $F4 as usual to have a sequence of Alambic. And it's lighter and it's better. And you have to do that to use in Arnold. After that, I just export the ground with the scale again. And I promote the color from point to vertex because in Maya, as you know, uh, Maya understand vertex and not point. So I export only one Alambic for that and I will use a, a classic method to import into uh, into Maya and the last one is a scatter I use um, on the ground it's simply scatter and the same I just scale up and export one frame grind scatter from IBC here we go we are in Maya now so uh, I've got a simple scene with two light area light for my main lighting and, and the sky dome from the environment. So first of all, import the ground with the usual method, cache, alambic, cache, import alambic, path, and take the ground ABC, import. So I've got my ground. As you notice, there's a color into my scene. It exports the CD color uh, in vertex. Uh, remember, we just promote here the color to point to vertex. So uh, it's in the viewport, so it's a good sign because uh, it means that the information is in the mesh. If I want to use it in Arnold, I have to make some few things. The first things to do is to go to the shape and um, the shape is named promote because I didn't set the string path in Udini, so it's not a problem. Go to Arnold tab export and you have to check export vertex color. It means that Arnold can read the information, uh, the color information on the vertex. So now in the uh, hypershade, I will create the AI standard shader surface, as usual. Okay, nothing to change. I can put the specular to zero. I don't want specular. And as in the previous um, tutorial, we have to use uh, 
AI data user color. And then we put the name of the attribute CD and just plug to the bass color of the object. Select the object, assign the material. And now if I render, you notice I've got the color. As you can see, we have darker in the bottom and some issue here, but no problem with the claim. Okay, let's stop the render. Now we have to import uh, the uh, ground particle. For that, we'll not use cache because as you know, uh, Alambic in Maya cannot import particles. So I will use Arnold standing tool. Standing tool is very useful. I just click standing. I've got the standing here. Yeah, I will rename it now. Grain ground ground rains okay and i will check the ground skater here load and we've got the, sk the skater when i render i've got nothing i will hide the ground here rename it ground geo okay hide it and as you noticed there's a bounding box and it's uh, a good thing when you see a bounding box because it means there's some information. The problem with these methods is that you cannot have a preview with particles but when we, you render you will have something but now we have nothing. Why? Because the p-scale is not at the good size. As you remember we just scale uh, the, um, the object to fit to Maya uh, units and now uh, we don't you, we don't scale the piscal and it doesn't work uh, for the moment. So we have to change it. When you, you import the thing, you can see here, we've got the hierarchy of what is inside the alambic, the standing. And we see here, we've got the particle. And now we can have some attributes on this particle. So I will click on add assignment point and let's select radius. Here I can put radius so one, for example. And now when I render it, I've got my particles. Let's zoom in to see the particles. If I decide to change to have bigger particles, we can you can have bigger particles. So it works. Now, how can I shade it? Because uh, there's a color. It's uniform color on the grain, but I want this color too in my Maya. So let's back into let's go back into my hyper shade. Oh, thank you. I think we can use the same, in fact. Yes, we can use the same. So I will assign uh, the uh, shader to the standing. Uh, there's two ways to do that. The first one is to assign the shader directly to the standing. But there's another way um, to do that and is to assign on the object here. And I can do at assignment shader and he had a shader uh, fill where you can put shader. Why is this is interesting? Because in the in the alambic you can export many things in the same alambic. Here I've got only particles, but if I want to export a geometry too, I can assign different shader in say inside the same standing, the same alambic. So I prefer to use this method. So I will assign this to the shader. So the same, it will take the color and put into my bass color and let's render. And as you can see, I've got the color now. It works. Let's zoom in a bit and you can see my particle are color. Great. So now we have to import. Oh, I will unhide my ground. Um, let's import the simulation. So the same, we will create another standing here, I will name it grain sim. I will check. I got the folder with all my atom bit, one pair frame. So I will select the first one. Okay. You can notice we've got a bounding box appearing when I do so. So the first thing to do is to use file name because uh, there's a sequence of Alambic. So he, he needs to load uh, all the sequence. Uh, don't worry about that. Sometimes the path is not updated, but when I reselect the object, the path is okay. It's the same, we've got the uh, particle here. But for example, 
when I select the ground, as you can see, when I move the timeline, the boning box is changing size. So it's a very good sign because it it means that it works. It can read all the alambins, all the sequence. We will do the, exactly the same for this one. We will add point radius, put that to one, for example, and we will add a shader and we will reassign the shader here. And now if I move a bit into my simulation, render, as you can see, we've got the particle. And if you can, you can notice the motion blur is working too. That's great. Uh, export the V and understand the V inside um, the particle. So I can uh, remove the motion blur, motion blur, just to have a better look into my viewport and it works. Let's wait for my computer to render. It works quite good. When I change the timeline, it updates the render and the simulation and I've got all my grain. I think my lighting is a bit too high, but I will perhaps try to uh, reduce the uh, area light or to hide it. I will hide it. Yes, it's better. Yep. So it works. Let's stop the rendering. I will show you a little trick. We can be very useful to use custom attribute from Udini to Maya. Though for that, I will just create another uh, shadow. So let's create a AI standard surface, the same. And we use quite the same method. We use the AI user data integer because as you remember here, I've got an attribute my ID, which is an integer and is an ID. So let's go back to Maya. Let's put my ID. And here I will put a, a AI random node. For example, you can use, if you want, not this one, but you can use a custom float attribute to put into a ramp, something like that, to remap the color, for example. But here, I will put AI render to color because the output, I want a color, and connect the output to the seed. So each particle have a different number on my ID attribute, and it will change the color for each particle and connect it into the bass color. Now I go back to the grain seam and send the shader here. Okay. And now when I render, as you can see, we've got different color for each particle. So it can be very useful. Uh, we can, for example, set the A random to grayscale. So now we've got only grayscale attribute. And we can do, you know, a multiply with the color, for example. So I will stop the rendering and add a I um, data user data. I need to color to get back the color CD and perhaps multiply a I multiply the color with the random color, the random grayscale color, and uh, I can put into my base color. So I will show you, I will put a switch, a I switch to show you with and without. I can tell it this one and put without is the input one. And with the mix in the input to go to best color. So here, when I render this one, I've got nothing changed. All the particles have exactly the same color. And when I put to one, so I've got a mix. And as you can see, we've got some variation added onto the color. So it can be very useful. Uh, especially if on the end of the simulation where all the grain are in the ground. 
you can have slightly different and for that we can because I think this one are too black so I can perhaps add a AI color correct AI color correct it's not very easy when you come from uh, Houdini because in Houdini you can use to make space in, in the tab menu and here there's no space so it's a little bit confusing okay let's put the color input here and there and perhaps if I push this not too far I can add a clamp to avoid that a, a clamp so I will just have a strict color from 0 to 1 so I can change the color and perhaps uh, I don't know uh, bring up the exposure to 0 2 or 0 5 and so I will not have the the black the black one here I've got little variation if I switch to 0 you can see there's variation on my grain and here we go and I repeat the method is working with motion blur okay it's a bit easier to render but it's very interesting uh, if I go I will just stop the render now and go to I think there's a tab here and I'll be sitting here we've got the velocity scale I will go back to a previous frame okay I've got a lot of motion blur here Okay, and if I want to reduce the motion blur by half, and you can see I will have less motion blur on my particle. So it works. Studying is very useful because it's very light into the viewport. Uh, when you import mesh, you can have a preview, point preview, or wireframe of your mesh inside. But in particles, with particle, you've got no preview. So don't be confused about that. Um, just check as you can see my, my bonding box is, is is too little here but when I move the timeline it changes so it means it works uh, it's a little bit confusing because you don't have anything into the viewport but it's very useful because when you've got a very huge scene uh, it's very useful to export for example uh, you, you're building sorry uh, into standing and re-importing your scene so it will be very very light and as you notice when when we when you push the render button it starts immediately so it's it's very useful for that Okay, so thank you for watching and uh, I will uh, show you perhaps another method to import export from Udini to Maya. Have a good time. Bye bye.